The Mercedes C-Class might not be the biggest selling compact executive car, but it's still the one that many customers in this sector would rather have if they could afford to. This revised third generation version takes on BMW 3 Series and Audi A4 arch rivals with sharper looks, higher technology and lower running costs. Pricing still reflects its premium positioning, but in this form more than ever, this more efficient, more desirable C-Class now has a look and feel worth every penny. It's been over 30 years since Mercedes first bought us a compact executive saloon. Ever since, it's been the purveyor of the premium choice in this segment, though never the best selling or the most dynamic to drive. It was in an effort to address these two issues that the third generation C-Class was launched in 2007. A fine car, more capable and comfortable than any small Mercedes before it, but not quite good enough to address the mass market appeal of Audi's A4 or the ready response of BMW's 3 Series. It was close enough to suggest that with a few well-chosen tweaks, total class dominance might be possible. Hence the importance of this revised third generation model launched early in 2011. Now, normally a mid-term facelift of this kind amounts to little more than a wash and brush up. Here though, there are over 2,000 changes, the most extensive such package of revisions that the three-pointed star has ever added to a product in the middle of its life cycle. So you get the point. Mercedes means business with this car. Hence the smarter look, the high-tech headlamps, the seven-speed automatic gearbox, the stop-start engine efficiency, and the mind-boggling technology, all of which has filtered down into it from the company's larger E and S class saloons. Agility control suspension aims to make all variants more responsive, while enthusiastic drivers can opt for a sport model with either stiffened, lowered suspension or a dynamic handling package, able to adjust to the mood that you're in and the road that you're on. And it's all been achieved, so we're told, without compromising the comfortable qualities that make a C-Class what it is. So this remains a high-speed compact executive conveyance that in mainstream diesel form is able to be as frugal as a Fiesta and as laid back as a luxury saloon. And with high residual values matched to tax-busting CO2 returns, plus technology that even includes onboard internet connectivity, this could perhaps be the ultimate mainstream business tool. Let's find out. Now, I've done my best here to take Mercedes at face value with their claims that when specified properly, this car can be a dynamic match for anything else in the class. So I've got the Sport model with its fat tires and firm suspension, and uh, it's a package that I've matched to the engine that the majority of C-Class owners end up specifying. The 170 brake horsepower, 2.15 litre, four-cylinder C220 CDI diesel. Like all C-Classes, this one features agility control shock absorbers, able to uh, react to the road that you're on and the mood that you're in, and uh, adapt the response to suit. It's got an automatic gearbox with no fewer than seven speeds, and an optional intelligent light system that uh, is able to offer no fewer than five different modes to better illuminate my way at night. So why then? When I first got behind the wheel of this car, did I feel less inclined to drive it hard in the way that perhaps I might have wanted to in uh, a BMW 3 Series or perhaps even a sportier Audi A4? Perhaps it was the gravelly sound of the diesel engine, the slightly vague responses from steering and gearbox, or maybe it was just the fact of it being a Mercedes-Benz, a car unwilling to be sporty without an AMG badge on the boot. Whatever it was, I had to get beyond it, and so will you if you're to fully experience all that this C-Class has to offer. For that, you'll also need the sport version I've got here with its lowered, stiffened suspension. Ideally, you'll also want to tick the box for the dynamic handling package, which is able to sharpen the throttle and transmission shift response and further refine the suspension settings according to the road that you're on and the way that you're driving. 
Now, with some or ideally all of these features fitted, this car really begins to come alive on the right road. Um, point it through a series of fast flowing bends and you begin to uh, build confidence as you take in the um, near perfect balance the superb body control and the way that you can flick the car from corner to corner with the minimum of stress. The whole performance may not be as rewarding as it is in a BMW 3 Series but it's more relaxing and every bit as quick. Overall what I'm saying is that the gap to BMW in terms of driving dynamics has narrowed but still remains. Compensation though is provided by ride and refinement that are superior to the Bavarian car. Now, part of what helps here is the very thing that hinders this C-Class when it comes to throwing the thing about. It's extra weight. This car is 10% heavier than a 3 Series, which is why it doesn't feel as light on its feet. But in return for that extra bulk, you get a degree of Mercedes solidity that harks back to the years when the three-pointed star really did produce cars that would outlast you. Now the weight thing is important to bear in mind when you're choosing an engine for your C-Class. It's why you'd be well advised to ignore both the entry level petrol version, the 156 brake horsepower, 1.8 litre, 4 cylinder C180, and the base diesel, the 136 brake horsepower, 2.15 litre C200 CDI, in favour of the next engine up in each case, not only because performance will be better, but also rather curiously because fuel and CO2 returns will be superior too. So for petrol people that'll mean uh, that uh, you should really start your search with the 204 brake horsepower C250 which manages rest to 60 in uh, just 7.2 seconds on the way to a top speed of 149 miles an hour. Diesel people should go for the C220 CDI that I've got here with its 170 brake horsepower from the 2.15 litre engine. It manages rest to 60 in 8.4 seconds on the way to 144 miles an hour, thanks to 400 newton metres of torque. Now, so good is this diesel variant that I really don't think uh, that many diesel drivers um, need to find the extra money to uh, trade up to a Pokia diesel C-Class variant. It's uh, £1,200 more to go for the 204 brake horsepower C250 CDI and it's another £5,000 more to go for the um, 265 brake horsepower six-cylinder diesel, that's the C350 CDI. Petrol people though with deeper pockets would do well to look at a forgotten nugget in the C-Class range. It's the six-cylinder C350 with uh, 306 brake horsepower a car that would make a really satisfying sporting choice if you can't quite stretch to the 457 brake horsepower 8 cylinder C63 AMG range topper. The changes which differentiate this revised third generation C-Class from the original aren't huge but they do refine what was already a handsome if hardly a resting shape. Most obvious, perhaps, are these more curvaceous front headlamps, which, if so specified with by Xenon technology, are intelligent enough to vary their illumination for back road or highway use, and even better light your way around corners or when coming out of junctions. They sit above a gently reprofiled front bumper and more distinctive front air intakes with uh, optional LED daytime running lights. The rear light clusters are revised too and are still cleverly designed with aerodynamic ducts to improve airflow above a re-sculpted rear bumper. If you want the famous three-pointed star bonnet ornamentation, then you'll have to order your car in uh, more comfort-orientated SE or elegance guises, chrome-trimmed variants aimed at more traditional Mercedes customers. Sport models like this one, in contrast, have a, a more aggressive front grille and a centrally mounted Mercedes star, a look similar to that found for over 50 years on the company's sports cars. Take a seat behind the wheel and if you're at all familiar with the Mark III C-Class, everything will seem to be in its place. The foot-operated parking brake, the clear but intricately designed dials, the huge front seat travel, the excellent all-round visibility, Look a little closer though, and there are signs of recent careful thought. The restyled dashboard with its uh, centrally mounted display, 
and the higher quality choice of materials that include this large galvanized strip there to lift the otherwise unremitting blackness ahead of the front seat passenger and there also to uh, add character to what is a class leading cabin. The dials that you view through this three-spoke multifunction sport steering wheel are clearer too and incorporate this neat three-dimensional display at the centre. Get into a base BMW 3 Series or Audi A4 after trying one of these and it really does feel rather cheap. But those cars were beginning to steal a march on this one when it came to things like infotainment and telematics. This revised C-Class puts that right if you specify your car with things like telephone directory transfer, uh, wireless music transfer via Bluetooth, on-screen text messaging. There's even a USB interface included within the front central armrest. The wheelbase of this car remains the same as before, so don't expect any more rear seat legroom. Though the fact that this was markedly improved when this third generation C-Class was originally launched has left it able to comfortably accommodate a couple of large adults, even if they're stuck behind a couple of six-footers in the front. As usual in this class of car, three big adults back here would probably be a bit of a squash, but a trio of kids will be quite comfortable, and they'll probably appreciate these neat string uh, compartments, well able to accommodate things like colouring books and pens. Rather meanly, Mercedes charges extra for split folding rear seats on this saloon model. So it's just as well that space in the boot is decently large at 475 litres. And you've got these useful hooks for shopping bags. If you need more, then in the estate version you get a 485 litre boot that extends to 1500 litres if you push forward the split folding rear seats. There are three body styles available to C-Class customers, saloon, estate and coupe. And it's likely that you'll be paying somewhere in the 25 to 40,000 pound bracket that's common to this class of car. Assuming, of course, that you're not looking at the top C63 AMG version, in which case you'll need a budget probably close to 60,000 pounds once you've allowed for a few well-chosen extras. If you're looking at the estate variant rather than this saloon, you'll need a premium of around uh, 1,200 pounds over like-for-like -like models. If you've got your eye, though, on the style-conscious coupe, you'll need to allow a bit more than that. The two-door, after all, is only available in sporty trim, which inevitably makes it look a little pricier, around £1,600 more than an equivalent sport-trimmed C-Class saloon. So how do those prices stack up against obvious rivals from Audi and BMW? Pretty closely is the answer. The days being long gone when Mercedes could afford to charge you thousands more just for the privilege of having that famous three-pointed star on the bonnet. BMW, true, does offer base spec versions that look a bit cheaper, but if you do your homework and compare like trim with like, which in UK terms normally means aligning SE trim versions against one another, then you'll find that the differences aren't too great. A C-Class will cost you no more than £1,500, uh, more than uh, an Audi or a BMW with a similar engine, and it's usually a lot less than that. This C220 CDI diesel that I've been trying, for example, is almost identically priced to the alternatives. Whether the C-Class in question is a saloon, an estate or a coupe, it's most likely to be sold in the UK with a four-cylinder engine, either a 1.8 litre petrol unit or a 2.15 litre diesel. Now, most buyers rightly ignore the entry-level versions in each case. The 156 brake horsepower 1.8 litre C180 and the 136 brake horsepower uh, C200 CDI. Uh, these are older engines, inferior both in running costs and performance to the only slightly pricier variants that represent the next ownership rung up. So in terms of petrol power, you're looking at uh, either the 204 brake horsepower C250 or um, going almost the whole hog and getting the three and a half litre six cylinder 306 brake horsepower C350. As for diesel variants, well, there are two more versions of this 2.15 litre four cylinder engine. The 170 brake horsepower C220 CDI that I've been driving here, or the uh, 204 brake horsepower C250 CDI. 
Uh, that's before you get to the top diesel, the 265 brake horsepower six cylinder C350 CDI. Top of the range and very much in a class of its own. It's the 457 brake horsepower, 6.2 litre, eight cylinder C63 AMG. As for transmission choice, you'll need to pay extra for the 7G Tronic Plus seven speed automatic gearbox on all four cylinder diesel models and the entry level C180 petrol variant. If like most C-Class buyers, you don't want the standard six speed manual. Otherwise, this super smooth gearbox is standard across the range. Now, whichever version you choose, you should find your car to be decently equipped. The days being thankfully past when all but the most basic items on a Mercedes like this were at extra cost. So all C-classes come with uh, features like alloy wheels, front and rear parking sensors, front fog lights, um, a hill start assist system to stop you drifting backwards on uphill junctions um, and rain sensing wipers. Inside you'll find two zone climate control that also cools the glove box, uh, all round power windows uh, and heated power mirrors. There's a three spoke leather trim steering wheel, uh, an eight speaker CD stereo with USB and Bluetooth connectivity, uh, cruise control, a tyre pressure loss warning system and electrical adjustment for both the backrest angle and the height of the seats. You also get the agility control suspension, but even this long tally still leaves plenty of room, as you might expect, for a, an enormous list of desirable options. There's the huge panoramic glass sunroof, for example, and the lovely multi-contour seats that adjust to the shape of your body. There's even three zone climate control to consider. And you could uh, opt for these really clever, intelligent headlights that have five different driving modes to better illuminate your way at night. Uh, then there's the dynamic handling package that buyers of this sport trim model can consider that adjusts the engine and the transmission take up as well as the suspension to the road that you're on and the mood that you're in. And you might want to tick the box for the command online infotainment system with its internet browsing function able to turn your car into an instant wireless hotspot. Safety wise, Mercedes has gone the extra mile to make this a segment leader when it comes to motoring peace of mind. Though all functions aren't available on all trim levels, it's worth making the effort to find out what's on offer. So as you'd expect, there are all the usual features, the Isofix child seat fittings in the rear and a full complement of airbags, twin front, side and curtain bags, plus a driver's knee airbag and optional side bags in the rear, as well as all the usual electronic assistance for braking, traction and stability control to hopefully ensure that you'll never have to use them. But the thinking goes a bit deeper than that. Take the attention assist system that's standard on all C-Class models, able to monitor your responses for signs of driving drowsiness. If it thinks that you're feeling a bit tired, then it'll flash up warnings to prompt you to stop for a restorative coffee. Then there's PreSafe, a system that's filtered down from the S-Class limousine um, that senses when a crash is inevitable and primes all the systems of the car to reduce its severity. Equally worthy of mention is the adaptive brake system, which primes the brakes in wet or critical situations for maximum effectiveness. Then there's the Neck Pro anti-whiplash front head restraints and the way that the brakes uh, flash in an emergency stop to warn following motorists. Other safety systems are mainly optional. The Distronic Plus proximity control, which is able to work with the cruise control to keep you a safe distance from the car in front on the motorway. You've also got a camera that can read speed limit signs as you pass and display them on the dash and adaptive headlight assist, which is able to dip your full beam for you at night. Now, as is becoming common on luxury cars, you've got a blind spot assist system on the options list that uh, stops you dangerously pulling out to overtake in front of another car when you're on the highway. And also a lane keeping assist system that stops drowsy drivers from drifting out of their lanes when they're on the motorway. But the difference here is that both these systems can also have an active element, which means that the car can intervene if the driver doesn't or isn't able to respond to warnings. 
Now, it doesn't matter how good your product is in this sector. If its fuel consumption and CO2 figures don't stack up, then it won't sell. The original version of this third generation C-Class had slipped a little in this respect, uh, but this one sets the record straight thanks to a far-reaching package of blue efficiency measures that uh, all C-Class models now have, bar the fearsome C63 AMG. Now, uh, the blue efficiency package includes things like low rolling resistance tyres and a standard stop-start system that cuts the engine when you don't need it, when you're stuck in urban traffic or when you're waiting at the lights. Thanks to this, the C220 CDI diesel that I'm driving here puts out just 117 grams per kilometre of CO2 and manages 64.2 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle. And those are figures that are far better than this model's direct rivals, the BMW uh, 320D and the Audi A4 2 litre TDI 170PS. C220 CDI running costs are actually the high point as far as C-Class ownership is concerned. Even the more feebly powered C200 CDI diesel can't match them. And with the faster diesel models, the figures fall to 58.9 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 131 grams per kilometre of CO2. That's if you go for the C250 CDI. Or um, you're looking at 47.9 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 154 grams per kilometre of CO2 if you go for the six cylinder uh, C350 CDI. Petrol people um, will achieve the same uh, fuel consumption result whichever of the uh, 1.8 litre four cylinder models they choose. So that's 42.2 miles to the gallon for both the C180 and the C250. And both of them will return you about 156 grams per kilometre of CO2. Now, honourable mention in the petrol range must be made of the uh, C350 six-cylinder model, which despite its potent performance and seven-speed automatic gearbox, still manages to return 40.5 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 170 grams per kilometre of CO2. And that's an astonishing 31% improvement on the same model in the pre-facelifted -face range. What else might you need to know? Well, there's an Assist Plus service indicator on the dashboard that uh, keeps a track of mileage to uh, service appointments so you won't have to uh, make any more garage visits than are strictly necessary. Insurance groupings range between 30 and 39, uh, although if you go for the C63 AMG that's up at group 45. And residual values, as you might expect, are unbettered in this class. After three years um, of running something like this C220 CDI, as long as you've racked up a sensible mileage and haven't gone wild on the options list, then you can expect to get significantly over 50% of your original purchase price back, leading to a cost per mile running cost figure that's uh, less than something apparently far cheaper, like a two litre uh, Renault Megane diesel. Now it used to be quite easy to pigeonhole the three main contenders in the compact executive sector. A BMW 3 Series was for younger, more enthusiastic owners. A Mercedes C-Class was for older, more laid back folk. And an Audi A4 was for people who didn't really fit into either category. With this revised third generation C-Class, uh, Mercedes has certainly done enough to keep their existing target market, but this car also has enough about it to make significant inroads amongst buyers who would once have thought little before signing again on the dotted line for yet another A4 or 3 Series. Potential Audi customers will like the high technology, the intelligent headlamps, the class-leading safety kit and so on. Wavering BMW buyers will go for the uh, sport trim models with their clever suspension setups. And both groups will appreciate the far-reaching improvements in running costs that, in this respect at least, have made ownership of the three-pointed star in this sector more affordable than ever before. So affordable, in fact, that taking the high residuals into account, this car could actually end up costing you less over a longer ownership period than something Mondeo-like and more mundane. Now, don't get me wrong, Mercedes still has work to do with this car, but on the evidence of this model, the signs are that its rivals are going to have to up their game.